Hello, welcome to video two of this series. If you haven't seen the previous video, it's got some important information on this project, so go and do that. If you have, welcome back and let's get to it. So right now, let's take a look at creating some basic events in FMOD. Once you have your empty FMOD project opened up, it'll look similar to this, except without all these folders. Now, in order to create a blank event, just right click over here in the events browser, click new event, and give that event a name. In this case, I'm going to give it a name of fire because I'm going to be creating the fire event for the torches. And if you notice, once it's created, this little hashtag unassigned pops up. I'll talk about that later in this video. So once you've created your event, you might notice that starting from a blank project, these different panes on the screen have changed somewhat. So let's quickly talk about that. Over here on the left, this is called your browser. So here you can browse the events, your banks, and your assets. I'll talk about the banks and assets later in this video. The good thing about the browser is you can quickly find what you need, whether it's any of these three categories. And you can also quickly search for something. So if you have a thousand events all wrapped up in this whole pane, you can quickly search for fire and that'll show up. This pane over here on your right is called the properties. It consists of the 3D preview and the properties. In this video series, I'm only going to be covering 3D preview and I'll be talking about this later in this video. And finally, down here, this is your dock area. This is going to show important information about whatever you have selected over here in your event browser. And by default, the dock displays the master track when you have nothing selected. So if you select something else, it's going to show important information about whatever is attached to it. In this case, the volume fader. Uh, you can also show things like 3D panning, the output. You can add effects on it, and that'll show up here. So this is a really good thing to have. And if you ever find yourself running out of space in your event browser, perhaps you're working with a lot of tracks, um, maybe your screen is just small, you're working on a laptop, you need the extra space, then you can easily and quickly close all these three panes, and that's by pressing D for dock, B for browser, and P for properties. So very quickly, you can make more room if you need it. And if you are working on a larger project, one thing to think about would be to create a folder for all your events. So say if you had multiple events, you could create a folder, say this is going to be for all the vehicle event sounds. Now you can just drag them in there. And then within that, you could even create a new folder as well, and so on and so on. This is very useful, especially if you start to have hundreds or even thousands of events within a project. Okay, so you have an empty event. Now let's import some sound. The quickest way to do this is to open up your window and go to audio bin, control three or command three if you're on a Mac. And this opens up your audio bin. Now here is where all your audio assets are gonna be stored whenever you import something. You can also drag and drop from your finder, your Windows Explorer, audio files onto here and they'll all show up. Let's say that none of these files currently exist in your audio bin and you want to import some sounds to use for this project. If you don't have a sample library, maybe you're not a sound designer, you don't have a lot of sounds, you could use fmod.io, which is a service within fmod itself. So you just type in the sound you're after, in this case, a torch for the fire, torch, and it shows results. Let's click on one of them. You've got some options and audition it. That sounds like a torch. Let's say that's what I want. You could click and drag it to your assets and then it'll show up over here, which it already is. Another way is to click and drag it right from IO and into your event. I'm just getting an error saying it's already added to my asset folder. So I'll just go here and then like so. And as you can see, it drops right in. And now that the file has been added to the event, you can see a blue region with a waveform of the audio has appeared. And over here, down here in the dock, you can see almost the similar thing to this as well as some additional parameters, your volume, your pitch, and you can click on this play button over here to just play it, see what it sounds like without any additional effects that you may have added. And over here in this 3D preview, what it does is it lets you pretend that this arrow looking thing is your sound, your event, and you can move this around to simulate what would happen if in a first person game you're walking around and sounds are, you're moving and the sounds are going in different directions relative to you, the listener. So you can audition this by pressing space for the sound and just moving this around. 
and you can hear what effects that might have. So now you want to think about what type of sound you're making. In our case, we are making the sound of the torch burning, which is going to keep happening for the whole game. Unless that torch somehow gets extinguished, it's going to keep playing the audio. So what that means is you want to loop it. When the sound starts and finishes, you want it to go back to the start point of the loop and to the end point and then keep looping for all of eternity. So to create a loop, it's super simple. This is your logic tracks area, this black area above your audio waveform over here. So if you right click in this area anywhere, just go to add loop region and you kind of get this cursor looking thing and you can just drag this anywhere. So this is going to be the start point, this side, and this is the end point. So just drag this end point to the end of this audio file. It actually snaps, which is very handy. And if you want some more precision, just hold control down while you're doing it and you have more freedom. Sometimes you're not going to have a perfect looping file, so you will have to adjust the start and end point. Or if you're doing this in a digital audio workstation, you can edit it there. Luckily for us and this video, this audio file loops seamlessly, so let's just listen to that. I'm just going to lower the volume a bit. Click your cursor, press spacebar to play. And as you can hear, it's going to loop even in the editor to give you an idea of what it'll sound like in-game. In case you're wondering, yes, there is a shortcut to create a loop around a single region. To do that, get rid of this and right click on your region, new loop region, already done. One of the challenges when using the same audio file for a lot of game objects that are playing it at the same time and are close together as well, such as in our case the torches, is that this can cause audio issues such as phasing. So to prevent that from happening, we want all the torches to still use this audio file but to start at different points so they aren't all playing the same thing at the same time. So to do that, you want to make sure you have this selected first of all, and then go over here. You can see it's called trigger behavior in the dock, and then go to seek, and under seek, you're going to have start offset. Start offset, as its name implies, allows you to offset the start of the event. So with a value from 0 to 100%, let's say 45%, whenever the event gets called, it is going to start 45% of the way into the event, so somewhere around there. But we're not done. We want to make sure that out of all of the torches, they all have a different start offset. So one of the things you can do in FMOD is when you have a dial like this, you can usually right click on it and you can add random modulation. And when you do that, you'll notice down here in the dock, you'll have a random column pop up and over here you have a start offset modulation knob. So from 0 to 100% again, and when you drag it, you'll notice on the start offset, you're actually filling in some area. So if I drag it to 50%, this means that whenever this fire loop starts, it's going to have a start offset random value of any number between 45 plus or minus 25%. I'm saying 25% because that's the halfway point of the 50% start offset modulation. So since the audio in each torch event is going to start off in a different place in this file, this is just going to ensure that there's going to be no interference whenever you have two similar sources together. And now if you remember this hashtag unassigned icon we mentioned earlier, let's get rid of this. Let's right click on the fire event and go assign to bank, master bank. Go to the banks, look in your master bank, and you will see that the fire event has been assigned. Now, you can think of a bank simply as a package that contains all the necessary files and data to make your scene have audio. Sometimes in larger or more complex projects, you'll actually have more than one bank. You could have banks for vehicle sounds, weapon sounds, anything you want. And this is just gonna be so you can load and unload sounds at certain points to save memory. Creating a new bank is a simple process. Just right click, select, and give it a new name. But in our case, it's a small project, so we only need one bank, the master bank. So now that we have an event, and that event is hooked up to the master bank, let's go ahead and build the bank. So to do that, go to File, go to Build. It's going to finish, and then go to your Unity project now. And if you look in the console, we have a notice from FMOD Studio. The bank that was just built was in this location. This is the FMOD project location in the build folder. And that bank was actually copied by the FMOD integration in Unity to Unity's assets, streaming assets folder. This is a helpful feature. Otherwise, you'd have to do it yourself or set a target folder in your FMOD project. Now let's add the fire event to the torch. 
So go over to a torch in your level, select it, and this will quickly bring it up over here in your project hierarchy. And just go to prop torch and go to add component, type in fmod for short. And you want to go to fmod studio event emitter. What this studio event emitter script is, is it's one of the scripts that comes with the fmod integration package. And this allows you to quickly implement sounds into your level without needing to actually go in and code yourself. Under play event, select object start. Object start would be whenever the level gets loaded, whenever the object is loaded. Stop event, leave it at none. We don't want this event to stop playing. In the event, it says event not found, simple fix, go to search. This is all your events that you would have made in your F1 project. Go to wherever the event in question is. In this case, it's here for me. Double click and it is done. Now, if we look in the scene, you'll notice there's some changes. So first we have this golden speaker looking icon. This is to represent the sound source. And then we have as well, one circle and another circle. And this represents the object's sound attenuation. So while you're inside the circle, while you're close to this small circle, this is gonna be the loudest the sound will be. And on the outside, this is the outer limits of the sound. So if you're outside of this circle, you will not be able to hear it. And once you start to come in, you'll start to hear it. And by the time you're here, you will hear the full volume of the sound. By now, you should be able to create an event within FMOD, export that event in a bank to Unity, and successfully import that event via the event emitter script to a game object. So now that we've got all these event emitters within our level, you have to hear them somehow. So go over to your quality manager. This is your player for this level. Uh, go to high quality cameras, flying rigid body, and go to camera high. And what you want to do is you want to add the FMOD listener here. The FMOD listener is the equivalent of Unity's audio listener. Just in the same way as this camera would be your eyes for the level, the FMOD listener will be your ears. Just scroll down, add components, type in FMOD if you haven't, and go to studio listener. And that's it. That concludes this video. Stick around for the next video where I'll show you how to create more complex events with multiple audio tracks and volume and pitch randomization. Thanks for watching.